If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. Make sure you check out Poton Store. They have the new certain shield codes already available and they have automatic email delivery for these codes. You can get them in batches of 50 codes with a slight discount or individually for 89 cents each. They also have all these other promo codes. They have um, every other set you could imagine. And if you use Tailbone code, you get 5% off your final purchase. For the European players, Millibuds Gaming has everything from collectibles to all the latest cards from the latest sets, Cosmic Eclipse, Hidden Fates, and everything from Sun and Moon. Don't forget to check it out and use Tailbone code when checking out in order to get 5% off your final purchase. Hello everyone and welcome back to Brand New Day of Road to TG Worlds 2020. Thank you so much to everyone who's watching this super early stream on Twitch. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to do a like. <coughs> it really, really helps out the channel. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna make these full arts because I ended up deciding that I don't like the regular arts too, too much. And in the meantime, we are going to... I recently featured this deck not too long ago, so if you caught that video, you'll definitely understand what this deck is all about. Zinchino has the great make to ability where you discard a card and you draw two, so you get a lot of card access that way, just like Sora, GX back in its day. And then we are also using Station to finish our turn by drawing three extra cards, so giving us a lot of card access. And the idea behind this deck is to mill your opponent using Belova and Brighton Man, discarding the three cards from your own deck, but also theirs. You don't mind discarding from your deck as you do have Orangaroo to resource management resources back into the deck. And you also have Macargo GX's Burning Magma and GX to finish off a game, either by using Ditto into Macargo or simply by discarding the Macargo and using Mew3 to copy the GX attack. You have Crushing Hammers to slow down your opponent. <coughs> you have Lily's Pokedolls, as we were just talking about in chat. There's very limited cost effects right now, so Lily's Pokedolls actually um, really help in um, slowing down your opponent, buying yourself turns to set up, to stabilize, or simply to mill their deck continually, right? So, which is really, really awesome and really important to do for this deck. It's its only win condition, really. So, that's the goal of it. And um yeah that's pretty much it you'll be behind in prices you never take a price with this deck basically um it's really hard with only three energy and melee jake tk thank you so much for the follow um so lieutenant surge allows you to even have double below land brighton man a single turn giving you six cards to discard from your opponent let me save the fuller changes and let's jump into the ladder and play with the Oceana fourth place deck. All right. Uh, the current full arts look like they have some character and not just a half decent three Well, Yeah, the new the new Sword and Shield full arts definitely look much nicer than the old full arts, which had the 3D Pokemon but a very dull background. The new V cards the, that are full art also have more more nicer looking backgrounds. All right. Decent dish start. We are going second. <laughs> I'm gonna stop saying I I disagree with my opponents going first because I feel like I've said it enough. We see a fire flint to start off for my opponent. Baby Blounce deck shouldn't have too much trouble milling this with limited cost effects for them. Shouldn't have too much trouble milling them. All cards so beautiful, Bibudas, thank you so much. <laughs> Courtesy of the very kind Pokemon company which allowed the, allowed me to have this demo account with everything in it. <laughs> Max, estás en YouTube y en Twitch a la vez, así es. No a la vez, está en el futuro, estás en el futuro y en el presente. Eso es lo que estás. Okay, so that was nice. I'm gonna go ahead and grab. I feel like double Cynthia Caitlyn. I don't want 
to start LL buying right away, right? I mean, okay, so why am I not quick balling first? Why am I not quick balling first? Because if I get a Minchino out of the deck, then my odds of finding a Minchino off of this Cynthia Caitlyn are much lower, right? And if I <clears throat> if I get a Seishin, my odds of finding Seishin are lower. So if I Cynthia Caitlyn first, <clears throat> I have maximum chances of finding either Seishin or Sinchino, or Minchino rather, and then I can cap off the turn by searching for whichever one I did not find. So that's the logic behind not starting to thin with quick ball. Um, I don't think three station is really necessary in this deck. I think two is good, but three gives you an even better turn one when you end up going first, whether by choice or whether because your opponent uh, told you to go first after they won the flip. I think three station is strictly speaking really good to make sure that to make sure that you end up going, um, that you end up having a higher chance of finding it when you do go first. <clears throat> Third or anger would be really nice, but I feel like the deck usually only wants to use one or two resource measurements at most during a game. Third or anger would help with rising issues for sure, but not necessarily the, the best reason to to focus on it. All right, so I'm gonna grab a, another Minchino here. And I feel like I'm just gonna send a Caitlyn away. This, the Evolution Intense, get back to the level, that's why I discard it to start off. All right, this is really, really nice. I feel like there's no point in the Crushing Hammers, so I don't think I'm gonna bother with them. I am, however, going to retreat here. I will bench this and I will evolve. And I think I'm gonna actually mate to the Crushing Hammers. Baby Blast Evelyn has so much energy recovery that flipping heads is not gonna be relevant. So they're basically useless cards. All right. <clears throat> so Intrepid Sword finds us more resources. Now we have Surge's strategy. We have to hold the level, but we can start doing that. <coughs> The recycle energy to retreat was really, really nice. And Bow Wow Tets, always what? Matt, <laughs> for the win, yeah. Um, always what, Babalette? Station abilities like a mini tropical beach? Yeah, in a way it is. In a way it is. It's a mini tropical beach. In some situations, it's better than tropical beach, right? If your hand doesn't get disrupted too often, then it's better than Tropical Beach. <clears throat> yes, this is a top four list, Pesps men. Okay, so we lose that person. We're just gonna promote this now. All uh, right. So, what I want to do is find my Palpats before I play my Belilbas. And this George, thank you so much for the follow. I don't care about Fala, of course. <clears throat> I feel like I should just get the third mate to here. And I already have two Palpats, so that's like the idea, right? That's really, really good. What do I discard here? I should have checked for the ordinary rods. I should. I have two, right? So it shouldn't be too too bad. Mm. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make do a search, and then I'm gonna syndicate Lin away the crushing hammer and get back the search. So being being efficient. That's the name of the game: efficiency. I will also quick ball for an Oranguru. I still have eight all left, which is great. And then next turn is probably when I'm gonna start the the double mill plus resource management. I have three palpats in hand, which is really great. I have two Orangurus now, <coughs> so I don't see how we're ever going to lose this game. The Fion. 
Not a big deal. I lose a Cinchino, that's fine. That is a okay. I didn't use Surge because I didn't need to. I'm not planning. I need to get the Palpats into my hand so I can continually Belelba Bryson Man over and over. So I I could have used the Surge, but I don't need to use it. That's the thing. Just because you can play a card doesn't mean you have to. Okay, that's the key. Just because you can play a card doesn't mean you have to play it. Is my cargo prized? Good question. <laughs> Good question. I guess we will find out this turn. Probably. Yeah, we should. Because we should be looking at our almost our whole deck. So I guess we will find out. Make do <clears throat> this. I honestly don't know. <laughs> That's something that you probably want to check. Alright, let's create ball and check. Unless it's the last card, it is priced. Unless it is the last card, it is indeed priced. Grab the Mancino. Okay, so I'm gonna play this down. And now I'm going to... Yeah, let's search. The little bomb. Discard the top three cards. The little bomb. Discard the top three cards. No big teeny hits. Yet, there's a baby puzzle for some reason. And obviously I can't use Seijin. <laughs> uh, and then I think that's it, right? Yeah, we'll pass. Okay, what did I discard with the Belelba? Sinchino, Ordinary Rod, Seijin, and then these. So I don't have access to my cargo, so it will take a little bit to discard everything. It will take a little bit of effort to discard everything because I don't have the extra 5 mil from my cargo GX. You need Palpat and Ordinary Rod in hand before you can start to develop a chain. Exactly, and I already got rid of the Ordinary Rod. I mean, you don't need them per se because you do have a Rangaroo to recover them, but it's definitely nice to, to have, right? So I have the Balloon, I'm gonna promote the Station. This turn is probably when I use the Oranguru. So I'm gonna search. I'm gonna double Belelba since I'm not attacking my own deck at all. Alright, which is great. And I'll go ahead and do this. I'll go ahead and bench this. I'll go ahead and attach here. And then I'll retreat. And I will put back the two dolls. And. A search or the rod. Do I care about the rod? I don't think I care about the rod. I think it's better to just get back supporter. Yeah, because it takes pressure away from my palpad, which I did prize a palpad, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's fine. What do you think about a Munchlax in this deck? I don't think it's necessary. It could be good for the very late game, but. I mean, yeah, it could be good. Maybe two Sage and one Munchlax is more optimal. Munchlax is definitely a great card. Munchlax is definitely a great card and something to consider, Matt. There's definitely merit to it. I needed to be a little more aggressive with Mill in this matchup. Did I, though? Did I really? Without Bob, how can you beat Bittini Prism? You just hope to discard it, I guess. <laughs> That's how. Okay. So. Hmm. I know I have Surge. So I'm gonna make two. Okay, so I have these two. So I'm gonna bench this. I'm gonna palpa two Belelbas. And then I'm gonna make do the Mincino. And then I'm gonna the little bomb. What happened to the music? And then I'm gonna wait. I didn't play the search? I didn't play the search. Okay. Big mistake. Big, big mistake. 
I forgot to play the search. Uh, not the end of the world. Do I give my opponent another prize? Nah. That was that was uh, a miss. That was a misplay on my part, 100%. That was... Okay, maybe I just play the double pal pad. <clears throat> I'm gonna play the double pal pad. And I'm gonna retreat into this whilst using Intrepid Sword. That way I don't have to discard resources with this in Chino. Like, I do have the fire and this to discard still, so it should be fine, but if I can just not do it, then even better, right? <coughs> and the next turn I'll use Oranguru to put back resources, like the three Palpats, probably. We see a switch, we don't mind that at all. We see the blazer, which is perfectly fine by me. Still no big teeny prism in sight. No Victini Prism inside so far. Okay, so search and then the Lil Bum. Still no Victini Prism. The Lil Bum. Against Avocado GX deck, how can you win? You don't. Yeah, you definitely don't. Alright, so I'm gonna. I just got the feeling that's also very good. That is also very, very good. <laughs> Um, sure, I'll play the Lily's Pokéball, and then I'm gonna resource management. Doll and two Palpats. Okay, Doll and two Palpats. Let me open the dog for my door. The door for my dog. <laughs> okay. She was going crazy to go out. Okay. Be more efficient with. Palpads. Pablo still rusty. I just I forgot to click. I talk about using search so much that I just forgot to click on it. And there we go, right? There we go. I just that's it, right? Search double Pelova and I win. So was a Victini priced? Maybe. Maybe my opponent doesn't play Victini, which would be terrible. It seems like my opponent's last prize was. Big teeny prism, or it's in his hand. One of the two, but definitely still rusty. <laughs> Taking a week off definitely affected me a little, um, but not bad. You yeah, know, not bad. Let's play one more game with this. Let's play one more game. Yeah, if they build help or if they have my cargo GX, you lose. Like, it's once again, you can't beat everything. I feel like every time I showcase attack, Saludos de Predador, muchas gracias por, eh, por pasarte saludos a Cancún. Like, you don't have to play around every single card. What deck plays Macaro GX? Muse okay? That's something to worry about, right? Definitely that's something to worry about, but um, how, like, did people really expect Muse Welder to be super popular in Oceana? No. Now it's going to be more popular, so now you can expect more Macargo. So that makes this less good, right? That makes this less good. I do not want to go first. However, just like just because of, it's it's like last season when people would say, "Well, you lose to Circuitry when you're playing Zora." It's like, sure, but no one plays Circuitry, so why do I care that I lose to Circuitry? Who is going to actually play a random Bilal Band Bryson Man in their deck to beat this, right? If you know there's gonna be a huge influx of this at your local League Challenge or League Cup, then sure, go ahead and play it. But just because a card beats your deck doesn't mean you shouldn't play the deck in general, you know? That's kind of like, I don't know, I feel like a lot of people just, um, because like with that logic of, oh, but what do you do against this? What do you do against this? What do you do against this? There's always going to be something that beats your deck. So if you don't play deck A because B card beats it, then you should play deck C. But if deck C loses to the card D, then play deck E. And then you could, you just go on forever. And the conclusion is don't play anything because you'll always lose to something, <laughs> which doesn't make sense, right? So I think it's better to focus on how are you going to win rather than how is your opponent going to beat you? Which is very different, right? Focus on how you win. Yes, they have a cargo. 
sometimes. Sure. Belelba, like, no one's gonna play random Belelbas in their decks to beat this. No one. Absolutely no one. If they are, that means they were, like, traumatized <laughs> playing as this deck and it's just not gonna happen, you know? <clears throat> yeah, if there was one deck, the end all be all deck, Invincible, then everyone would be playing it. Everyone who wanted to win the $5,000 at regionals or $10,000 at the internationals, that's the one thing they would play, right? It's the one thing I would play for sure. <coughs> when you pick a deck, are you trying to predict what you will see in the tournament? A little, yeah, like that factors in. But you also need to make sure that your deck works. You know, you need to make sure that your deck works as intended, as you need it to work, as you want it to work. And that's not always um, possible or easy, right? That's not always possible or easy purely because... Um, so I need to love that now. Purely because um, this is a perfect example of I can play the card, but I don't need to play it, and I shouldn't play it because I'm just playing my own resources. <coughs> like what goes, what factors into choosing a deck for a tournament? The deck working well over and over, so consistency. Also the expected meta game, right? So like the Zuruki tree example or the Macargo example. If you know. Mew3 and Macargo GX decks are going to be super popular, then yeah, definitely don't choose this deck because even though you can mill them, they will eventually get you because you do need to get down to a very low card deck in order to win, right? And Clipper Agent, thank you so much for the follow. So yeah, that does factor in, but like you have to take it into, um, into context, like the Belelba example. You also lose to a Belelba tech into deck. But what are the chances that they get to keep the Belova safe in their hand until the very late game once you are down to a low card deck? There isn't even a way to find a Belova guaranteed. So do you think just playing one card means you immediately lose? No, that's not the case. The game is not that simple. Yeah, so there's many factors that factor in. <laughs> Trying to have a game plan versus all the decks is important, of course. Of course, right? Um, I don't think the expected popularity, like there's no real game plan against a Macargo GX deck and a, a Mew3 Welder deck because they will have access to Macargo, right? Um, Latius' attack perch could be one, but then you're not using your GX attack either and you have to play Psychic, so meh. So it's important to have a game plan versus all the good decks and it's important to also accept that you can't beat everything that you go up against. And therefore, um, <coughs> and therefore, should I just retreat? Nah, I don't care if my opponent KOs them, you know. Um, I should check for the Makar. <laughs> I didn't check once again. Um, it's important to have a game plan against all the good decks, but it's also important to recognize that you can't beat everything and not to over worry about random potential tech cards like a random Belilba, right? Or a few seasons ago, Suruki Tree GX when Zorg with all the special energies was popular. It's like, <laughs> sure, Zuruki, I lose to Suruki Tree, but who even plays Suruki Tree? So I don't, I lose to Suruki Tree only if I go up against it, right? And if in a turn, if in a regional of 800 people, there's one person playing Suruki Tree, I'll take my chances to lose to that Suruki Tree, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna tackle the two Cynthia Caitlins. My card is once again prized. So but my opponent is down to 25 cards. We're we're not losing this game. I hope. <laughs> I hope. I hope I haven't spoken too soon. Okay. So with that information in hand or in mind rather, I'm gonna discard the Belova. Because the next turn I can get back to the Lilva. I'm gonna play double. Great ball, which is great. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and evolve. I'm gonna go ahead and just discard the Mew3. I don't care about the Mew3. <laughs> I do want my opponent to take a prize at some point, but if I can delay that as much as possible, then that's also really cool. And that's the second water energy I've gotten rid of so far. I'm gonna play that down, gonna play that down, and. Do I care that the Mew goes down? I guess I do care. 
I guess I do care. And then let's just Intrepid Sword. If I just need to Belal Val run over manually, I'll do that too. <coughs> That's why you love E-Switch and ADP. Yeah, E-Switch and ADP is pretty good. Having it at the right time is the, the key question, right? Okay, given the results of OCIC, for instance, what do you predict will be the meta at the next region? Lots of goods in China, Ability Start and Welder Mew? I would definitely expect a lot of Welder Mew and Ability Start, right? That feels natural. However, um, for example, in Chino, when Mew 3 Welder is probably going to be extremely popular, I wouldn't say Sinchino, or I wouldn't expect a lot of Sinchino. Yeah, my opponent recognizes that he's dead. Um, because of my cargo gems, right? Because of what we just talked about. So if I look at those results, I look, oh, Sinchino did really well. But my cargo GX is now gonna be heavily played in Mew3 decks. And that's gonna be really tough because a well-timed Mew3 uh, GX attack of my cargo makes me deck out. Right, so that would put me off Sinchino, that would be my logic. But Welder and Ability Sard are also relatively um, accessible decks, right? Even though Jirachis are very expensive, um, and so are the Denis, the cards have been around for uh, Jirachi now a year, and the Dene for nine months. So that gives plenty of people plenty of time to get the cards, right? So it's a very accessible deck. And it's been really good for this season, this whole season, since Worlds, LAIC, and Mewtwo Welder were the exact same. We had the same finals at both internationals, despite a rule change and despite a, a new set. So if people were already playing those decks and they were already popular, they're gonna remain popular, right? So I would say those two decks are probably going to be the most popular. And ADP Station, because it's a new toy, it did really well as well in a tournament, even if it didn't get to the final, it was the most played deck and the most represented in day two, and it had a good enough conversion to top eight as well. So I would say you can expect the meta to be heavy of those three decks. And then the rest, that's really difficult to tell you. It's gonna be 20%, 10%, 50%, it's impossible to tell, right? But the majority of the decks at Toronto Regionals, for example, I would expect them to be Sinchino, Ability Sard, or Firebox. I would call it Firebox and Welder Mew. Yeah. All right, that will be all for Sinchino after that rant. We we're having a really good discussion though, so I appreciate the comments and, um, and it's good to have this back and forth. That will be all for this deck. Don't forget to like, leave a like on YouTube if you are watching on YouTube. And I will be right back with the fifth place deck, Station ADP. Don't go anywhere, I will be right.